In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Good people of God, you are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Wednesday, the 27th of September, 2023. It is Wednesday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year A. Today is the memorial of St. Vincent de Paul, priest. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Ezra, chapter 9, verses 5 to 9. The responsorial psalm is taken from the book of Tobit, chapter 13. The response to the psalm is, Blessed is God who lives forever. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. I read from the gospel. At that time, Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics. And whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And wherever they do not receive you, when you leave that town, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is let us exercise and benefit from Jesus' healing ministry given to us. Let us exercise and benefit from Jesus' healing ministry given to us. Dear God's good people, the gospel passage of today tells us of the ministry to which Jesus called and sent out the apostles. It was a ministry to evangelize, that is, to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. But not only, he also gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases and to heal. This means part of their ministry was healing to grant spiritual and physical healing, to expel demons from those under demonic spiritual attacks, and to heal those suffering from physical sickness. Remember that Jesus himself cast out demons. He also made those who were physically sick well, like Simon Peter's mother-in-law, who had a fever. When he laid his hands on her, she woke up and the fever was gone. At the end of the gospel passage of today, we are told that the apostles went through the villages preaching the gospel, but not only, they also went healing everywhere. These two go together. While they preached, they healed as well. This is the reason priests are called pastors of souls, because they heal bodies and souls. Let us focus on one aspect of this ministry 
that seems not to have been understood or seemingly has been neglected. It is the healing ministry. Many priests preach the gospel, but very many more shy away from the healing ministry. From the letter of St. James, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, we are told, Is anyone sick among you? Let them call the elders of the church, that they may pray over the sick person, anoint him with oil, and the prayer made in faith will save the sick man. Our Christians are sick. Many are sick. Many are tormented by evil spirits. And some priests shy away from this ministry. But surprisingly, priests have the powers to heal and to cast off these evil spirits. But often, when our Christians approach us with spiritual problems that need healing and deliverance, we send them away, telling them to stop hallucinating and seeing the devil everywhere. We try to run away from the reality that all they see and hear are creations of their own imaginations. But the truth is, these people truly suffer. There are many who don't have a good sleep at night because witches and wizards won't let them be. There are many who see and hear instructions from marine and occult kingdoms. There are many who see animals from devilish places owned by devilish people. Beloved, this is real. Let us not shy away from helping our Christians. I may dare to say this is what has led many to other churches, though they remain Catholic or Presbyterian. Many Pentecostal pastors have taken advantage of this and they rather focus more on this healing ministry than on preaching. Well, whether true or false, many have also begun to fake it because they want the people and our people are flocking to them because truly they are sick and they want healing. No one will be tormented by devils. Or yeah, there is a place where prayers can be said and they will be healed and delivered and they won't rush to those places. If we don't want our Christians deceived and misled, then it is high time for us to take seriously this healing ministry. Sometimes we argue that they are looking for miracles. Well, it could be. But truly, there are many who are sick and who are looking for healing. Some of us priests are no longer present for the sacrament of confession. That is also part of our spiritual healing ministry. Some of us shy away from the sacrament of the sick. That is anointing and healing of both spiritual and physical sickness. How many of us organize and go to hospitals or to sick people's homes to anoint them with the oil of the sick and to give them Holy Communion? To you, dear Catholic Christians, every priest has the power given him by God and the church on the day of his ordination to preach and to heal. When you are sick, call the priest. We have treasures that we do not know how to use. Do not be deceived or led astray to wrong places when you are desperate. The devil can take advantage and perform fake healings and miracles just to derail you. The Catholic Church has what you are looking for, so do not go away. And to us, dear priests, let us also take seriously this healing ministry so that our Christians may not be misled to go elsewhere to look for healing. In the Catholic Church, we have the sacraments. There is the sacrament of confession, and it is healing. It heals our souls. Do you know that there are many sicknesses that come on account of sin? And when you go to the sacrament of confession, you are healed in body and in soul. There are many of us who are sick. And you go to hospital. And no matter the diagnosis, the doctors cannot find anything wrong with you. Yes, because what is spiritual, the doctors cannot see. No machine or laboratory test 
can prove what is happening with you spiritually. Go to the sacrament of confession. It is healing. We carry guilt of many sins that weigh us down. How can you be well? Go to the sacrament of confession and find yourself healed. We also have the sacrament of the sick. That is also healing. When the priest anoints the sick person with the oil of the sick, it brings healing, both physical and spiritual. So when you are sick or when you have a sick person, invite the priest. We also have Holy Communion. Holy Communion is healing. To eat the body and the blood of Christ, it means Christ lives in you. How can the devil come to make a home in you when Christ is in you? But you see, many of us do not go to the sacraments. We don't go to confession. Our souls are dirty with sin. We don't receive Holy Communion. Tell me, how will the devil not make a very comfortable abode in you? And even when you receive Holy Communion, you receive it not in a state of grace. Tell me, why will the devil not make a comfortable home in you? So receive Holy Communion. It is healing. Jesus dwells in you. And where there is light, darkness cannot be. The devil will not come close to you. How many of us attend Holy Mass? Holy Mass is healing. Because in every Holy Mass, Jesus is made present. We organize masses for the sick. And when we make this and invite others to come, it is not only for Catholics, it is also for non-Catholics. We invite them to bring their sick along for the Holy Mass so that we pray and celebrate Mass and anoint them. But I tell you, many prefer and are concerned about the food that will be shared after the Mass than the Mass. So tell me, how do you get healed when Mass is organized to pray for you, to anoint you, but you prefer to come after the Mass because you want to come and collect two tablets of washing soap or perhaps four cups of rice or gari. So you look at the food you want after, not the prayer that is important for the sick person. Many times we have organized these Masses and they brought the sick people only after the Mass because they came to collect food. They were not concerned about the prayer. Dear good people of God, what you are looking for is in the Catholic Church. This has made those who undertake the healing ministry to be termed powerful man of God, as though the others are not powerful. Every priest is a powerful man of God. But there is a warning. It is not the prayer warrior. It is not the priest. Neither is it the pastor who heals you. No, it is God who heals you through them. So stop praising the instrument, unworthy as they are, over the master who is the one who does the work. Many times we hail priests, hail pastors, hail prayer warriors, as though it were they who did it. It is God who heals. It is also for us not to steal and to claim and draw attention to ourselves. If God has healed someone through you, stop drawing attention to yourself. This is why the healing ministry has become a big problem today. Because rather than praise the God who heals, we praise the instruments that God uses. A powerful man of God. A powerful priest. And this has made many of them to be proud. And oh, how the devil loves such proud people. Before they know it, he destroys them even with the very gift that they had. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Vincent de Paul that we may not lose sight of the great treasure that we have in the Catholic Church, the healing ministry. And if God uses you as an instrument to heal people, point to God and do not draw attention to yourself. Vincent was born in France in the year 1581 and lived his priestly life at the service of the poor and the formation of the clergy. He founded the Vincentians for the purpose of the spiritual formation of the clergy and to assist the poor. He also founded the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity. He was called the Saint of Charity on account of his passion and dedication to the poor, whom he served wholeheartedly. He died in Paris, in France, in the year 1660. He loved the poor. He came to the aid of the sick 
and through his intercession, may the healing ministry in the church grow from strength to strength. Amen. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Vincent de Paul and to institutions named after him. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.